Okay, so this is the second lecture of CS2 and 25 Chan week 7. So I'll put the project up later this week because I was, let's see if I'm online. I mean, I was thinking about asking you to do this, let's see, matsig. Yeah, so object-oriented signal processing for MATLAB, matsig. So basically make a, make a better version of matsig. But I don't... I'm not really thrilled about this because it doesn't really, in my opinion, uh, emphasize the power of object-oriented programming. Of course, it emphasizes the power of MATLAB because okay, it's a mathematical toolbox. So we'll see. I'll think about it some more. I have an idea. I want to talk about this to Dr. Jerry Thomas, Gerald Thomas, later this week. So I'll let, but definitely I'll put the project up before the start of lab. So that's that. Uh, today, what we'll do is we'll implement the polynomial class, okay, a class for dealing with polynomials. And the reference for the, I put some oops slides online. And the reference for the slides, so it's under my, it's, I mean, CS2510 website. So the reference for the slides is Cornell University's CS1112 course. Here are the slides, okay? Uh, now, the polynomial class itself, let's go back here. Uh, so this is a reference for slides, actually. The polynomial class itself is implemented in as a MATLAB help. Okay, I'm not going to follow the way they did it because A, they already did it. And B, I'm going to, the way I'm going to do it, it showcases the use of MATLAB's power as a mathematical package. All right, so I'm going to use the symbolic manipulation ability of Mathematica. So if you actually look at uh, MATLAB OOP polynomial example, if you Google search for this, right, so polynomial class there, it's already been done. So what I encourage you to do is to look at the way they did this. Like they do it in a very different way. It's not incorrect. So which is better is also depends on what you mean, what you, how you define better, right? So the more you practice, the more you will get better with uh, MATLAB and the concepts behind OOP. Uh, so what are the concepts behind OOP? There are only three concepts, which uh, this polynomial class will hopefully emphasize. There is an object is an instance of a class polymorphism or overloading, right? So these two we'll get to today. Inheritance we probably won't get to today, which is fine. We'll get to it the first lecture of next week. So the bottom line is by next week, the course will be done, the first lecture, if not today. Most likely it won't be done by today, right? So after that, it's up to you to work on the project. Again, I emphasize that it is, it is most likely not enough if you just listen to lectures, right? So hopefully after this lecture, it'll be clear that you need to practice. Uh, more, but these are the only three concepts in uh, OOP and the Cornell University slides. I mean, I I put together this from that lecture notes. It emphasizes this beautifully, right? Again, I'm not going to go over the way they did the interval class because they already did it. Okay. So the more you examples you look at and the more you practice, the better you will get at it. So let me implement the polynomial class. There are only a couple of MATLAB nuances. Let's call this MATLAB OOP nuances, and these are also again in the Cornell slides. Uh, the constructor must return an object, and each instance methods, except the constructor, the first argument must be a let's see, must be a reference to the object itself. So these are the only two nuances, if any. So let's start implementing the polynomial class. Oh, I already. I have put the source code up for the polynomial class already. Under if you go under lecture notes and videos, week seven MATLAB lecture example, it's there. But let me delete that. Let me start from scratch. Let's see. Where am I? So here I am. So yes, delete. Okay. So file new. Uh, class. Now, since in the interest of time, I'm just going to start typing away the polynomial class. But really, you shouldn't do this, especially for the project, in the sense that you take a piece of paper, and step one <coughs> is understand the problem. Right. So. That is, Eric. Oh my God. Okay, step one understand the problem. So, what's a polynomial? What's the definition of a polynomial? The mathematical definition. So, give me a mathematical expression for a polynomial. So, Oops. Yeah, this is an excellent start. 
x to the n minus 2. But the problem is, how many letters of the alphabet do you have? 26. So you're going to start running out. So let's fix this. This is correct, right? x to the n minus 2, uh, <coughs> dot, 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 to z, yes? So where this uh, so you can't so you are limited by the number of uh, x terms you have. So to fix that, this is a sub a n x to the n plus a n minus one x to the n minus one. Okay, plus c. Oops, a n minus 2, x to the n minus 2, dot, 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 till what? A is 0, okay? So this is the ge uh, general definition of a polynomial. Now, your A's are all constants. They could be complex numbers, but I'm going to assume in this class I'm going to implement A's are reals, okay? It doesn't have to be, okay? So here is, this is what we're going to implement. Now, there are, what's a monomial? Uh, I mean, loosely speaking, what's a monomial? So this is an example of a polynomial. Uh, so many terms, right? So what's a monomial? So give me some examples of monomials. So m1 of x is 5x squared. Is that a monomial? Yes or no? Why? It's one term, right? That's all it is. It's an example of a monomial. So binomial is two terms. Trinomial is three terms. So polynomial. I mean, loosely speaking, there's a mathematical definition of this, but we're not going to get into it. So this is what we got to implement, okay? Now, this is, so in MATLAB, there is a symbolic um, data type, okay? So symbolic data type. So this is, again, part of understanding the problem. Uh, you do this on a piece of paper without even getting into MATLAB. Now getting into MATLAB, so it's sim uh, construct symbolic numbers, variables, and objects. For example, let's see. Yeah. Okay, oops. So if you go in here into the workspace, you can see it's a symbolic object, or a, like a use. Like I like to use whose. So it's a symbolic object. That means what you can do is you can do stuff like this. So it's called P1, polynomial 1, 5x, yes? So that's P1. P2 is negative 6x, yes? So what's P3 going to be? If I say P1, P3 is P1 plus P2. What's P3? What do you think it should be? Huh? Negative x, right? So this is very powerful in the sense MATLAB can understand symbolic operations, all right? So this is how we should play around with MATLAB. This is what I mean by practice. Notice that if you just type 5x, this is a single expression in MATLAB. So it's saying I can't find it, all right? Whereas if I explicitly put the multiplication sign, it means it's five times the symbolic object, all right? This is what I mean by practice, and you, if you can tell, if you tell me that you can understand this without practicing, I don't believe that. Right? MATLAB is not the best symbolic toolbox out there. There is Mathematica, there is Maple. MATLAB is pretty good, right? Okay, so we're going to use. That means what we're going to do is. So let's do a polynomial class. And one of the item things about the way objects are implemented is objects are handled by reference, if you will. For example, if you go into these slides, uh, let's see, uh, here. So let's say you define uh, interval is just a class that implements a mathematical interval. So this is the interval between 3 and 7, okay? Now, when I assign S to P, S is an interval that is referenced to P, okay? So if I change anything in S, P will also change, right? It's called, what is called call by reference. Uh, in other words, the object is not copied when I say S equals P, right? It is something that's a MATLAB nuance, and that is how objects are implemented 
that's something you got to remember right. you cannot forget and that is one of whoops closed it by accident this symbol here means this polynomial class inherits we'll talk about inheritance like i said next lecture we won't get into it this lecture but that's one of the consequences you know, that is the call by reference of inheriting from the handle class right just remember that objects in matlab in this slide objects are called by reference okay so that's matlab uh i guess matlab no one zero objects are handled by reference or or ah implemented by a call by reference mechanism yeah, that's exactly what it is all right so having said that uh let's get into this polynomial class uh this class implements a polynomial object okay understand that class an object is an instance of a class okay again this is in the slide so let me this is a very good example okay defining a class is not equal to creating an object a class is a specification example cookie cutter right an object is a concrete instance of the class and this is i mean i don't like this example but biting the head off one of the cookie doesn't remove the heads of the other cookies right so that's many instances cookies can be made using the class cookie cutter is that clear so from the polynomial class i can make a monomial i can make a binomial right so when we talk about inheritance just as a preview we will deal with what is called as the chebyshev polynomials okay just uh ah come on there so a chebyshev polynomial is a polynomial okay that's a is a relationship again we'll talk about that next week just to give you a preview but what i mean is this an object is an instance of a class this class implements a polynomial object uh polynomials are stored as symbolic uh data types okay uh constructor expects an array of doubles okay not complex as polynomial coefficients now we got to ask yourself what is the ordering uh ordered from highest power in x to the lowest power okay you can ask yourself wait a minute what about multivariable polynomials I mean can it be in x and y yes it can i'm not going to implement that so you can see how this can get complicated right but the thing about oop is again uh, go through these slides towards the end they talk about relationship calling superclass inheritor okay i don't have it here but oop is very it's somewhere in these slides oop is very good at managing complexity okay oh here it is great for managing large projects that's what i was looking at right uh so let's take a look so in other words i'm going to call uh we'll talk about uh protection later in the sense you don't want this property to be accessible ideally to a client that is an something that instantiates the polynomial class all right but for now this is okay so in the sense on uh, this uh is the symbolic uh polynomial representation okay in x if you will okay first is the constructor so the constructor the methods are all functions okay uh so the constructor has the same name and there is a uh oop definition okay it's not a matlab definition constructors in oops has the same name as the class okay now again these are the you should train yourself to think abstractly for example this kind of definition will not be possible in java directly because java does not have a symbolic data type okay this is a power of matlab or mathematica for example because they're mathematical packages right so i'm leveraging or we are leveraging the uh, power of matlab to implement this nth order polynomials okay 
And if you really think about it, I don't think MATLAB has a polynomial type. Okay, it's got a symbolic type. Make sense? So these are kind of things you should think about. Why can't I do this in Java or C++? You could, but then you have to define a symbolic type, right? Because they don't have one. All right. So uh, function uh, constructor has the same name as the class, and I was working on this last night. And I got this done in like a half an hour, but it's, it's really motivated me to look at OOP. And this, I think this is a very good example of OOP, right? And uh, not only a very good example of OOP, it is also a good example of leveraging the power of mat MATLAB or mat the ma mathematical package, right? Constructor, it's, in other words, it's a better example than implementing a linked list. Yeah, I could implement a linked list in MATLAB to showcase OOP, but that doesn't really utilize, in my opinion, the power of MATLAB. Constructor must return a reference to the class object, okay? So if you will, uh, this is OOP. This is OOP concept, okay? That's what a constructor does. So function, uh, let's see, poly is polynomial class C, okay? So C is all if you want coefficients, okay? Or you can even call this real coefficients. Let's even be more specific, right? A real array of coefficients. So it's not complex. We, that's just a constraint we did. Right? There's no reason why they cannot be complex. Because guess what? Okay? So MATLAB does have a complex type. Obviously it does because it's a mathematical package, right? All right, so let's keep going. Okay, so uh, again, you should not do this like I'm doing the sense I'm doing this because of time constraints. You should actually take a piece of paper, write this out, and then now you got to figure out, all right, how do I, so what I'm going to get is basically, uh, let's see, I don't know, three, four, five, okay? So what is the polynomial representation uh, I should get if I pass this real coefficients, okay? Since I said real, let's do pi. So what is the polynomial expression for this? 3x three x, three x squared. This is what I want to get, right? Pi x plus 5. Yes? Let's see, it's Yeah, so x is still defined. OK? Now, a couple of nuances. MATLAB array indices. So let's say if I call this uh, my, my array of 3, 4, 5, yes? What is the array index of the first element in MATLAB? Do you remember? One. One. It's not zero. Okay. So you got to remember that. Just MATLAB. Um, so having said that, let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to declare a symbolic object inside here. Okay. Now, something important here. Look at this. Right. This polynomial, there is no type associated with this. Yes? By instantiating uh, the polynomial in a constructor, okay, I'm forcing the type through this expression here. You see that? It's a very powerful paradigm. Right? I haven't called this, whoops, I haven't called this a double, okay, nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, uh, let me, uh, mm, mm, mm. I don't want to use the word, okay, Inst uh, let's see, initialize first term of polynomial, because I'm going to put the first term in, okay, this is to take care of the case when you're, when you have constant polynomials, all right, think, well, let me write it out and think about it, all right, uh, and then we'll, test the constructor. Uh, let's see. So poly dot polynomial equals, okay? So again, be, look at the syntax, right? My constructor returns a reference to the class object. Okay, it's returning an object. I want to instantiate the polynomial within that object, right? So I do, this is how you dereference. Polynomial, poly dot, use the dot operator, okay? This is actually a holdover from C, kind of, okay? If you heard on C programming, you will be familiar with this. 
There's also another pointer dereferencing in C, like this. We don't use that here. It's true. How many of you have seen this before? This dereferencing in C. Yeah, so one person has seen it. So I don't know. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is let's be careful here. Uh, 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 so my, I want to do real array coefficients of one. Yes. So I'm going to assume that it's going to the highest coefficient is first times x to the what? So let's go back here. So let's say I want to instantiate this polynomial. Yes. So it should be what? Real array coefficients of 1, which is 3 times x squared. Yes. So how do I get that here? Yes, length, exactly. Uh, length of, well, I call this, it's too long, but whatever. But I copied this apparently not. Okay. Yeah, real array of <laughs> coefficients. Too long. So let me just let me, let, let me just call this coefficients. Coef. Length of coef. Whoops. Minus one. Yes. Put a semicolon there to print the echo. That's the first term. Now what? Now how do I do? So I'm going to use a loop. Okay, for k equals what? Where do I start? So where do I start? K equals? Yeah, so in other words, finish, finish this loop. So I want to... So go back again. Go back to this example. This is what you should do is on a piece of paper, right? It's really hard to do this in your head unless you have a lot of experience. And I, even then, I don't recommend doing that. Right? So when your project comes around, you should take a piece of paper and start thinking first. Don't go into MATLAB and start typing away. That will not help you. So how do I do this? So I've done 3x squared. Let's say I want to instantiate this polynomial. I want to go pi x plus 5, right? So f unfortunately, my resolution doesn't permit me to show two things at the same time. Uh, it actually does. Right? So here. We have done 3x squared. Yes, I want to do pi x plus 5. So how do I do that? For k equals what? 2. two. Length of coef. Yes? Yeah? Now let's use math. Okay. Poly dot polynomial. How, how do I get it? Use math. Right. How do I build this up? This is the beauty of MATLAB, or right, a mathematical package. We want to leverage that here for building the polynomial. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, this should be called coef. I screwed this up. We'll get an error. Coef of k times x to the length of coef minus k. Of coef minus k. Almost, right? This is beautiful. Almost, okay? This is excellent. It's very good. But does this work? I mean, and this is what will happen. Like, I mean, let's say you do this, you print. Okay, let's just. Uh, this is actually really good. So let's just. Uh, let me not tell you what the potential problem with this is. Let's run this and see what happens, okay? So this is how like, you learn debugging. Now, something about MATLAB I've noticed, sometimes it just doesn't register changes in the class. Okay? So if you get an error saying a method is not defined, quit MATLAB and restart it. Don't ask. I haven't figured out why it does that. Right? So let's see if this works. Um, so I want to declare P1 polynomial class okay, of 3, let's just do this, pi 5. Yes? Okay, expression or statement is incorrect. Uh, let's see what's wrong. Which one? Oh, never mind. So what's the problem? So it gave me an error, right? So I clicked on that, line 23, column 17. Let's click, let me click on it again. What's the problem here? What's the problem? How do I fix this? I don't need this, okay? I just put this as a placeholder. That's the problem, so take it out. 
Well, that error is fixed. So once again. Okay. So it looks like it did something. I don't have some way to display the polynomial. I'll figure it out. I mean, I'll, we'll, we'll figure it out shortly, but... Well, that's not right. Okay. So I'm accessing the member of this object using the data operator. This is not the way you want to do it. I'll show you how to do it more elegantly in the correct loop way shortly, but what happened? Huh? So what's the bug? So here, I'll pause the lecture, so figure it out, right? I already gave you a hint that there's a problem in line 19, okay? <coughs> what's the problem? So it'll take like three minutes to figure it out. I'll pause the lecture. Staying. All right, so after our short time dilation, so actual time, three minutes has passed. So, like Sam says, that's the fix, yes? And this will work, right? I mean, this is, again, the beauty of using MATLAB. You can't do this in Java in the sense the addition operator is overloaded, okay? That is, it works, or it's polymorphic for symbolic toolbox. I mean, for, sorry, for the symbolic data type, okay? Oh, by the way, I was talking to Professor Tran, and if you don't have the symbolic toolbox in MATLAB, you can't do this. But most people I know do have the symbolic toolbox. Anyway, so this is what overloading means, right? So it's defined that on double, okay? It's defined for complex numbers, yes? And it's also defined for the addition operator is also defined for symbolic objects, okay? So we have just over, well, we haven't overloaded that yet. We will. Uh, do, 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 do. We have over. We are. We are utilizing the definition of the addition operator on symbolic objects. Yes, you see that. Very powerful, right? Well, let's see if this works. And uh, we might get an error here in the sense it may not. Let's see if MATLAB recognizes. See, if there's a star here. Okay, that means we changed it, and this change has not been saved. I thought I saved it. Okay, save, save, save. Let's see. Still has a star. Yeah, I thought. I mean, let's see. Let's, let's clear everything. But see, still doesn't go away, right? <coughs> yeah, I had this bug last night, so I'm not going to risk anything, right? Quit. When in doubt, hit the reset button, right? So. <laughs> so uh, let's restart again. Hopefully, my changes are have been incorporated, but it's easy to get it back, right? Again, it's. You gotta practice to get the syntax right. Okay, so on, while it's booting, oh, it's already awesome. It's pretty fast. Uh, let's, see, let's go in here. Come on. So look, the constructor returns an object of type polynomial class. I'm accessing the property polynomial within the object using the dot operator. Okay. So it's, in my opinion, it's kind of hard to see this unless you practice. Okay. So let's do this again. So P1 equals polynomial class, okay, of what, 3 pi phi, our friend, yeah? So P1 dot polynomial, okay? Now, we're not done yet. Let's check. Uh, I don't know, 5.6, yes? Let's call this P2. So P2 dot uh, polynomial, okay? That's pretty cool. I didn't expect that, right? 28 over 5, very powerful, right? You're going to be like, hey, Bart, can I do this? Can I do that? Yeah, because this p1 dot polynomial is not elegant. I'll show you how to fix it. We are using the fact that the plus operator is overloaded on symbolic. Okay? We are not using the, we have not defined the plus operator for polynomials. You see that? So let's see what happens. Yeah, that's right. We okay, just added 28 over 5 plus 5. Yes? So let's fix this. Before that, I'm going to do another method. In other words, I'm going to overload the disp method, okay? So I'm going to declare the function disp. You're all familiar with disp. Disp is defined for doubles, for example. 
So the MATLAB, okay, this is why you have to go through the MATLAB OOP documentation I gave you. So you have, you have a lot of reading, right? You have the boots reading, which mm -hmm. talks about OOP. Then you have the MATLAB OOP documentation, and then you have the slides from the Cornell University website, okay? The MATLAB OOP documentation tells you that when you call disp method on this polynomial object, okay? MATLAB is going to say, wait a minute, this is defined for, let's say I don't do this. I try to do this. What am I going to get? I'm going to get nothing, right? In the sense, this is not defined for polynomial objects, yes? But I'm going to overload that. So it's called polymorphism, overload the disk method. Now, um, mm, let's see. Uh, other than, so there's only one thing here. Uh, note that this is a MATLAB nuance. Any method other than the constructor must have a reference to the object itself as the first argument. This is MATLAB nuance, okay? It's the way it is. So function, it's not going to return anything. Disp. I like how Cornell says, calls this self, right? You can call this anything you want. For example, if you go into the MATLAB polynomial class, they have overloaded disp. And the way they do this is very different. Okay, so they have a lot of uh, the, uh, but here's the disp. So they call it OBJ, right? I like calling it self, based off of Cornell. Because self means it's the object itself. Now, but watch this. Pretty self dot polynomial. Okay. So there is a command called pretty or a function defined pretty print a symbolic expression. Right? It's defined for symbolic expressions. How do you know this? Use MATLAB more and more and more and more. This is what practice, all right? Okay, so let's see if it you know, looks like it. Well, let's see. Let's, there's no star. So clear polynomial of 3 pi 7. Now let's do something more exciting. 3 pi 6 pi 20. Ah, wait, negative 7, okay, oops, undefined, oh, look at that, you see the difference between here and here, yes, so now it knows how to display it, it's doing that, okay, is that clear, very powerful, right, oop, we're not thinking procedurally. We're thinking objects and... Okay, one more thing and then we're done. Okay. So let's overload. Now let's define addition on polynomials. Okay? Overloading addition on polynomials. So now, again, if you go, go through this reference design, to overload the plus operator, can you, let me ask you this, can you do this? Can I do that? What do you think? Let's see, polynomial one, polynomial two. Eric's nodding his head, no, why not? Doesn't feel right, correct? Uh, plus a line plus. Yeah, it's a, there's a line here, it's saying it's like, ah, you gotta do this, so it's called plus, right? Because you just, you, you can't use the symbol. So to overload plus, you use PLUS. To overload minus, what do you use? Spell it out, right? Now, something important though, overloading, um, this has to return, let's call this sum, okay? It has to return an object of type polynomial class, yes? Uh, oops, I screwed up. Okay, it should be remembered the first argument. Uh, okay, let me write this down. Note that any method other than the constructor must have a reference to the object itself as the first argument. Let me call it self. Let me not call it P1, all right? It's very explicit. Now, let's see if we really understand this. Will this work? There are two errors here. Hint. So what are the problems? 
just not really. I just type that in. So what you should also get into the habit of is not think as you type, right? So will that work? Don't type it into MATLAB, print it out and figure out what the error is. There's one obvious problem that which you should know. There's another very subtle problem here. But what is the obvious problem? Yes? No, P1 is right here. P1 is defined. The, uh, uh, the comment was, is P1 not defined anywhere? Yes, P1 is defined. You're passing it as an object to some. So that's not the problem. What's the problem? Remember, the types should always match. What's the type on the right? What is this type? <coughs> Symbolic. What's on the left? You know what type that is. What type is it? It's an object of type. Polynomial class, correct? Yes? So what's the problem? OK, excellent. That's one way to do this, all right? But here is a, is that clear? Here is a better way. OK? So let's see if this works. The issue is going to be polynomial class expects. Now, this should like, uh, I mean, this is quote unquote the correct way to do it. I say quote unquote because polynomial class expects. The constructor expects this to be of what? Type double, right? So let's see what happens. Uh, it's saved. Yeah, it's saved. So let me do P2 is polynomial class uh, negative 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. OK? Uh, has been changed, but the change cannot be applied. Yeah, all right, fine. All right, P3 is P1 plus P2, OK? Now, the addition operator has been overloaded on the class polynomial, or the addition operator will apply to objects of type polynomial. Let's see what happens. Right. So is that right? Is the sum of this and this this? Let's see, negative 7x to the 5 plus 3x to the 5 is negative 4x to the 5th, correct? 6 plus negative 7 is negative 1, OK? Now, I'm going to stop here because we're running out of time. Uh, so we'll definitely finish the course next lecture, right? It's just inheritance and a couple of other things. Because I can't keep doing this. Only I get better at this, right? So trust me, if, unless you're like really good, you have to practice or you won't get this, right? An example is, you've heard of Richard Feynman, the physicist? How many of you have heard of Richard Feynman? Right? Have you seen the Feynman lectures? So they're available for free online. So Dr. Thomas told me he, when he took, uh, when he learned physics in the 60s, he went over the Feynman lectures. Right? Um, Microsoft has this for free on their website. So what people did was they listened to the lectures. They thought they understood everything without practicing. They went to the exams and they bombed it. Okay. So Feynman is probably the greatest lecturer ever. Right? The bottom line is even. After listening to the, yeah, Gates puts Feynman lectures online. If you don't believe me, you should listen to his lectures and be like, oh, I understand physics, and you should go try solving problems. Right? Just by, after listening to lectures, most people will normally bomb it. Because right? you can't really solve problems unless you practice. That's what I'm trying to tell you here. Right? You've got to practice. So what we'll do next class is, this is technically, okay, the problem here is domain. Right? You're expecting in the polynomial class constructor to have coefficient as reals, okay? But MATLAB is smart enough to figure out that, yeah, this is symbolic, but what they want is real, and so it's adjusting, okay? It's not very explicit. So you have to fix that, or you have to put a comment here saying that, uh, let's say, under this method, notice I don't use the word function, it's not a function, it's a method. Right? Under this method, the comment under this method that, well, this will work of, the constructor will work for objects of type symbolic. Not objects, sorry, of uh, inputs of type symbolic. Wrong, wrong. Okay. But anyway, this is very, 
powerful. So what we'll do is next lecture, we will look at inheritance. Okay. That's the final concept in OOP. We have done polymorphism. We have looked at objects as an in instance of a class. We got to do only inheritance. Okay. So after next week's lecture one, I'm just going to have office hours instead of lecture. Right. Remember that the lab next week is actually your second exam. So you better get at this pretty quickly. You better become good at this. So uh, what are some, since we have like six more minutes, let me ask you, what other operators could you implement? What other operations? I mean, how else could you expand on this? What, what else can you implement? Operations. No, no other operation? What other operation can you implement on polynomials? Huh? Subtraction is trivial because you can do plus. Right? I can do minus right now. I'll just do self polynomial plus minus p1 dot polynomial okay, here. So since Ryan said subtraction, let's just do it. Right? Boom. Done. Uh, well, almost done. Boing, right there. Okay. It's trivial. Roots. Excellent. So roots is not really a mathematical operation. It's good. All right, so roots is one. So let's keep type doing roots excellent. Something else. Roots. Multiplication. Multiplication. What else? Division. Division. All right. Keep going. So you can see now how this is building up. All right. Uh, power. Okay. I would say power can come under multiplication, right? Yeah. So that's good, good, but excellent. What else? I'm looking for something else. Let's see if you really get this. Two more. Yeah. Two more, and then you know. What else? It's all excellent, right? So you're all thinking. It starts with a D. I. Now you'll get it. F. Differentiation. Differentiation. Oh, Integration. There you go. Try it. All right. So in other words, you have now implemented a polynomial calculator of arbitrary precision in MATLAB. Very powerful. All right. With OOP. Now just think about this. Uh, your abstraction was completely different than a functional procedural way. Right. So if we just take a moment and like, how do I do this procedure? You're like, ah, oh, it it should be a little more difficult to do this procedure. Right. With OOP, it's very natural to do this. So OOP is a natural extension to of the symbolic type to polynomials. Okay. All right. Next lecture, like I said, we're going to do inheritance. So we're going to particularly implement the well, not the Feynman lectures, but the Chebyshev polynomials. Okay. One. Number two, I already have under week seven MATLAB lecture examples this polynomial class online. Right. <coughs> It's slightly different from what I have in lecture. I'm not going to post this because you know, I already did this in lecture. Go through the video. And also, I have put this plot point. Remember I told you, told you that variable number of arguments? Take a look at this plot point because it's a little tricky. Right? So again, please practice. You've got to be mindful. You've got to be motivated. You've got to practice and so you can get better at this. But hopefully this is fun. Right? If it's not fun, well, we're in the wrong business. All right, we're done. <laughs>